life. Today is Reconciliation Day and the main celebration is taking place at uh, the, you know, the Black AC Sports Ground in Khopane Village in Zirast where my colleague uh, Palisa Chubisi is standing by and uh, I do believe that uh, he's with Dr. Abraham Sirote who heads up the Social Cohesion Unit in the Department of Arts and Culture. And we cross over to you Palisa. A very good morning again. Well, it's a very good morning once again, Simpio, of course, and a very good morning to our viewers at home. Rightfully so. Yes, we're still coming to you live from uh, Hopani village in Zerost. I said earlier on that Zerost is approximately 50 kilometers from Fiking, and in fact, it's actually a walking distance to the Botswana border. So that's where this morning celebration of uh, uh, the National uh, Reconciliation Day, like I said, President Jacob Zuma will deliver a keynote address later uh, this morning here at this very same place. So since the beginning of this month, a reconciliation month the department of arts and culture has been hosting reconciliation dialogues they've gone all around the nine provinces and yesterday they ended up with the dialogues here in the northwest province let us just chat to dr abraham sarote who um, he heads up the social uh, cohesion unit from the department of arts and culture dr sarote good morning and welcome to morning live good morning and good morning to your viewers thank you so much for your time just before we get to the details of uh, today and look look into a reconciliation uh, talk to us about your unit, Social Cohesion Unit. I know it is not necessarily quite a new unit, but it's been in existence for more than three years. How has it done? Yes, uh, the Social Co Cohesion Unit in the Department of Arts and Culture was established as part of the um, agreements at the 2012 National Social Cohesion Summit in Club Town. The Department of Arts and Culture was tasked at that time to open dialogic platforms to promote national reconciliation, to promote social cohesion and nation building. And that was not going to be possible unless we have a machinery uh, f from within the department to do that. So that's how we started. Let me just also point out that in terms of government, government has a program of action for uh, social cohesion and nation building. And the Department of Arts and Culture was tasked by government uh, to coordinate, to give support, to monitor and to do uh, reporting in terms of our effort as government and as the broader society in the social cohesion and nation building agenda. So, so, so we manage that program and we report to cabinet on a quarterly basis. We have 43 uh, concrete, actionable uh, 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 commitments in that program of action. And that program of, program of action involves uh, 13 uh, government departments and entities and they report to us periodically and we also report to cabinet uh, in terms of progress on a quarterly basis. So, so that's what we've been doing. But uh, as part of that social cohesion uh, program of action uh, is the, the dialogues you are referring to. The dialogues are meant to open up dialogic platforms for different communities uh, to converge uh, so as to bridge the socio-historical divisions which are caused by colonialism and apartheid. All right, just before we get on to the dialogues, let me just go back to, to the unit. Um, your unit is based on a national level. How does it infiltrate down to, to the ordinary people on the ground? Because I think that's where the problem is. Yes, um, it is a unit in the national department, uh, but I've already spoken about f uh, 42 uh, concrete uh, you know, actionable commitments in the program of action. Those commitments, those actions are actions which the different departments uh, do at the, at the local municipality level, at the provincial level. So, so that's how we, we cascaded. But uh, we have also made this call to provinces uh, to, uh, to have their own uh, social cohesion programs. We have given them a framework. We have a national strategy for social cohesion nation building which is approved at the uh, 2012 uh, uh, Social Cohesion Summit. So provinces follow that. Let me just also point out uh, that uh, in terms of that program of action which provinces are feeding into and uh, hopefully will get municipalities as well uh, uh, to, to comply. Uh, that's a basic architecture uh, of that program of action uh, or pillars. Uh, one of the foremost pillars in that program of action uh, for social cohesion is uh, promoting um, uh, national symbols, uh, uh, including constitutional values. It's about equity redress as well. It's about pro fostering social compact. We, we also, as a pillar, uh, want to ensure that there is increased interaction 
among South Africans across race and class. All right, talking about interaction, what are the ordinary South Africans saying about reconciliation? I mean, uh, talk to us about the dialogues that were held uh, in all the nine provinces. Yes, uh, let me just say that uh, South Africans... I mean, when South Africans talk about national reconciliation, they are not talking about some kind of, you know, uh, utopia which is unattainable. Uh, when people say they want national reconciliation, we want social cohesion, uh, what they are saying is that they want some sort of semblance or instantiation of what this future, which is envisioned in the NDP, could, could look like. Uh, uh, so, so, so it's a more realistic uh, way of uh, imagining social cohesion. People are despondent, obviously, uh, about our, uh, you know, in terms of race, race relations. Yeah. People are despondent in terms of equity and re our progress in terms of equity and redress. But, and this is important, uh, there was a survey, National, Reconcil uh, uh, National uh, Bar uh, Reconciliation Barometer, which was conducted in 2015. I think one of the most important findings um, of that barometer in 2015 uh, was that there was very little interaction among South Africans uh, across races, okay? Interaction in what Interaction, term? interaction. And, and that's, that's a problem. I think the only interaction that happened in terms of that survey is in, pub, you know, in, in public spaces where you are required to interact because you're working together, it's in the uh, employment uh, arena and so forth. But uh, what, what is important as part of the finding of that uh, reconciliation barometer is that South Africans were saying that despite the problems, despite the hurdles, it is still important, it is still necessary that government um, continue. Uh, with this program on reconciliation. The programs are there, just a quick one on this one. The programs are there, but the problems are also there. Let us just take a look at some of the, the cases that we've seen this year, the Sparrow case, the Coffin case. and So it looks like there's still a long way to go in terms of uh, South Africa attaining a complete reconciliation. Of course, problems continue to be there. Uh, we are only 20 odd years into democracy and we've had more than 300 years of colonialism and apartheid. And we know, uh, uh, you know, the, the centrality uh, of race in terms of our social historicity. So uh, we're it's not going, to, yes, we're not going to get rid of racism after uh, 20 years into democracy. Okay. But yeah. I, I think what we can take comfort in is that South Africans believe uh, in this reconciliation agenda despite the many problems and hurdles. Mm -hmm. And people in general are committed right. uh, to the project. Dr. Sorote, that's where you're going to leave it for this morning. But thank you so much for, for coming through. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. That's have it. There you have it. That's uh, uh, Dr. Abraham Sirota. He heads up the Social Cohesion Unit from the Department of Arts and Culture talking to us about how, South, how far South Africa has come in terms of a reconciliation. Well, it's time for your weather update. I know Phil is standing by. Good morning to you.